Right. Right, so start number two. Um, the agenda basically is I'm going to cover a little bit about the planners. Uh, also, a very brief overview of how SIFE actually executes queries, leading into query plans and some definitions, and uh, finally, getting to the good stuff, which is uh, optimization tips, which hopefully you'll find useful. And yeah, please feel free to uh, grab us later on if you've got any questions. Right, so the planners. So when, with the inception of Cypher, there was just a, a, what we call the rule planner, and this essentially was uh, the original planner, and all it did was consist of rules that uh, used our indexes to actually produce a query execution plan. So it wasn't uh, using anything really much more fancy than that. Uh, just need to make a note that currently all write queries still use this planner, but that is going to be changing in 3.0. So um, with uh, the inception of 2.2, we uh, introduced a new cost-based planner, and this is uh, based on uh, good database uh, knowledge um, principles uh, that the RDBMS uh, folks have been using for quite a few decades. So the idea was to actually um, use our statistics service. So we store things like you know, how many uh, labels of this, you know, how many um, movie labels we have, how many uh, relationships of this type we have, that sort of thing. Actually using those statistics to actually assign costs to various execution uh, plans, and then we actually pick the cheapest plan. I'm going to make this much clearer in the next few slides. Um, and all read-only queries now use this by default. And the idea is that actually um, the queries executed with this perform much, much better than the rule-based planner. However, I actually do have a caveat. If you find that you need to actually fall back to the rule-based planner, uh, you can actually do this by prepending any queries with cipher planner equals rule uh, on a query by query basis, or actually um, set um, that uh, DBMS cipher planner to rule if you find that the cost-based planner is not working as it should be for you. Um, so uh, anyway, just to let you know that if you find that uh, cost -based, uh, the cost-based uh, planner is not working for you in one patch release, just to retest it again with a uh, new patch release because we're continuously trying to actually uh, make things faster for you. Also, if you notice that there is a massive discrepancy between um, a query that you run with rule, whereas it works much, much faster that way than actually using the cost-based planner, please let us know because actually we'd like to know about that and to actually benchmark. So just to give you a bit of background information, the Cypher team do try and actually benchmark as many queries as we can, as many types of queries as we can, with as many data sets as we can. And in this way, we actually strive to ensure that cost will always perform better than rule. So anyway, if you find that that's not the case for you, please let us know and we'll actually try and do something about it. Right, so this is actually how Cypher actually executes queries. So um, uh, there are a couple of links down there, which um, I urge you to read if you want to find out more information in detail. But just a very, very basic uh, bird's eye view what actually happens is uh, a query is executed in the following steps. We first get your input query, and we actually tokenize that and uh, build an abstract syntax tree from that. Using this abstract syntax tree, we actually do semantic checking, and this is just basic error checking, such as uh, you know, you're not dividing a string by another string or something weird like that. So assuming that's actually all right, we then uh, go on to the next step, which is actually where we optimize and normalize this abstract syntax tree. And we do things like moving all labels and types, for example, from the match clause into the where clause instead. And uh, we do things like um, converting all equality statements, like a uh, name equals uh, an or something like that. We actually change that into an in instead, and that's just to normalize it for when you actually are using an in operator. So we just want to normalize things. It's less things for us to then uh, think about later. From this, we actually create a, create a query graph from the abstract syntax tree. And the idea is that this is a very high level representation of the query, and it's much easier for us to operate on this query graph as opposed to the abstract syntax tree. Step after that is actually where a lot of the work gets done, and that's actually to create a series of logical plans based on the um, query graph. And essentially what we do is using the data from our statistics store, as I said before, how many relationships of this type start from nodes with this label, etc. We actually get uh, the label and the index selectivity. Selectivity basically what we want to do is always strive to use, the more selective something is, the fewer rows will come from that. And that's what we always are aiming to get because the whole idea for the query to run fast is not to start from too many rows, or at least we want to limit the number of rows from which we begin. So essentially using that, we um, estimate our cardinality. Cardinality simply means the number of rows returned after each operation. 
Again, we want to limit that down to as few as possible. And essentially, once we've got this information, we get our cost. And this is essentially, you can think about it as the amount of work the database has to do. And we want to keep this quite low. So imagine now we've got a whole plethora of uh, logical plans that we've built, all with different costs and you know things are in different orders and everything like that. And then essentially what we do is we employ an algorithm to select the cheapest one. And uh, essentially that logical plan that's chosen then is as optimal as we hope it is. And uh, then thereafter we actually create an execution plan based on that logical plan. And then a uh, yeah, query execution uh, follows from that. So in 2.2, the way by which we chose the optimal logical plan was by using a greedy algorithm. And this guaranteed that we perhaps wouldn't choose the cheapest logical plan, but it would not be the most expensive logical plan. We've actually changed this in 2.3. We're actually using something called IDP, or Iterative Dynamic Programming, which is far more exhaustive. So we actually, in most cases, now get a much cheaper logical plan from that, but where it spends um, as much or less time than the uh, greedy, greedy algorithm did in 2.2. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Indexes are very, very integral to this. Yeah. Oh, sorry. The uh, question was whether um, indexes are used to um, compute the costs. All right. Cool. So, so well, I speak really loud anyway. I don't even need a mic. Uh, okay. So, so that's so. There's your background of how, how does this thing actually work. Uh, so now we actually let's have a look at well, how, how do I how do you actually interact with that. Uh, plan and, and work out well, what do I do I need to do anything how can I make this query uh, faster if it's not uh, up, up to the speed that you're expecting it to be uh, so, so let's imagine you're in your in your Neo4j browser that ML demoed in the morning uh, and you've got your query and you're like oh, I want to see one of those plans that, that Petra's just described uh, so you've got two ways that you can see that plan so there's two uh, two keywords that you can prefix your queries with so you keep the query just go to the beginning of it uh, and you can type either of these uh, these words uh, so you can either type explain uh, and that will give you a view of the plan uh, with predicted costs, so that won't actually run the query. So you'll just get back, this is what I think the plan would be uh, if I was to run the query. And so that gives you quite a good overview without actually having to go and run uh, and run the query. Uh, or if you actually want to see, oh, well, actually go and actually run it and let's see what it actually does, uh, then you can prefix it with, uh, with profile instead. And then it will run the query and it will come back uh, with profiling information alongside it. So both of those are useful depending on, uh, depending on what you're doing. Uh, so I thought let's start with, uh, so you've got like a, I don't, I'm not necessarily saying this is a goal that you should aim for, but this is the current record of the longest plan we've ever seen anyone post on Stack Overflow. I can't fit it on a page. Uh, it's quite, so, right, so are you ready? Here we go. There we go, so three pages. That's the current record. So uh, that was, I think that was 230 lines worth of Cypher, uh, which if you imagine how concise Cypher is, it's a lot of, it was doing a lot of work. Uh, but this is kind of this is just to give you an idea. This is what a query plan looks like in uh, uh, in uh, in Near4j. So it's, it's, it should be look reasonably similar to to one from uh, from SQL. Uh, you can't you probably can't, at the back. You definitely can't see these, but there's effectively describing operators on each line. So there's an operator name, uh, and then if you were to expand it, it will show you uh, how much work was it doing. Uh, and we're gonna, we'll do a little bit of information about uh, what that work actually means. Uh, so when you're query profiling, you're kind of obviously you want to keep the output of the queries exactly the same. Um, and then what we're looking to do is we want to try and reduce the number of DB hits. So on each of those operators, you'll get a, uh, a, a value that says, hey, this, on this operator, this part of the plan uh, that Petra just described, this is how many DB hits I did uh, to calculate that. And uh, as a high level goal, the idea is can you reduce that number? And there are various ways that you can do that, which we're going to go into. Uh, but first, uh, first things first, what is uh, a database hit? So this is a, uh, an abstract unit of, uh, of storage engine work. Um, so it effectively could be uh, looking up a node, it could be looking up a property, uh, could be looking up a relationship. I can't remember. Did it say? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's kind of roughly, uh, if you see a query with 10 dB hits uh, and you do a, a query which does the same amount, uh, exactly the same query and it does 5 dB hits, the one with 5 uh, uh, should be faster as a, as a, as a rough guide. Um, so, what we're going to so what we're going to do for, the, for for most of the rest of the talk is have a look at some queries, have a look at the query plan, uh, and then we're going to compare them against each other, applying different tips that we've kind of accumulated from helping people uh, answer, speed up their queries on Stack Overflow. So we're going to go we're going to go like that. Um, 
So while we're looking, while we're going through these plans, these are some operators that you should be uh, that, are, that are good to look for, and in your own queries, you want to be ideally you want to be uh, looking at these as well. Um, so the first one that we've got on the top uh, is called the all node scan. Uh, so that is the equivalent of select star from star. So I look at every single row in every single table, or I, every every single node in the whole database. Uh, so if you have that. Uh, in your, in your query plan, when you hit your profile, uh, that's probably going to take quite a long time uh, to come back if, you're, uh, if you've got a production size data set on it. Uh, so we don't really want to see that. Um, what's better is to see label scan. So label scan uh, is the equivalent of select star from a table. Uh, so for example, find me uh, all the nodes which are a user. Uh, and that, that's much better. So if, you, if, you, if that narrows down the cardinality of the number of nodes to look at, uh, that's a good one to see. Uh, even better than that is the, is the last two that we see uh, listed on the end. So it could be the, the node index seek. So that's where you've uh, chosen to put an index uh, on some of your nodes, and you're able to zoom in straight away and go, OK, cool, that's where, that's where I want to start my query from, and we don't need to scan through anything. Uh, and then another version, another one similar to that is the node index scan, which is used for when you do uh, range queries. Uh, OK, so what we're going to do, so we're going we're to have a look uh, at some queries using uh, the Cine East data set. So this is a... Uh, extended version of the uh, Play Movies that comes in the in the Neo4j browser when you when you download it, uh, so it has uh, just more movies uh, and more information about them uh, uh, from IMDb. Uh, so hopefully, most people have seen movies. Uh, so hopefully, you'll be able to ha have some relation to the queries. Uh, we're going to start. We're going to start really simple, and we'll get a little bit more complicated as we go. Uh, so query number one. It's a really simple one, uh, and obviously, being Neo, we've got to find the matrix. Um, so we're starting off. So uh, I guess if you've seen Nicole's talk, you know all about how to use uh, the match query. Uh, effectively, here we're saying, can you find me uh, a node? I'm going to name it. I'm going to call it movie, but that's just that's just a name. Uh, but I need it to have the property, uh, the property title uh, with the value, the matrix, and then I'm going to return it. So I'm just expecting to get one one row back. Uh, so if we do it like this, uh, we open up. This is our plan. If you if you run this data set, this is the plan you'll get. Um, I think you can see it in the, in the bottom half. I'm going to read it out for the people at the back. Um, so what we've got here, so at the top, uh, this is the all node scan. So already it's like, uh, that's bad. Previous tip. Uh, so we've got the all node scan, which is looking up uh, 65,000. So 65,000 uh, nodes in our database. Uh, it's then doing a filter. So we're kind of filtering it down by the, the title. Uh, and we eventually end up with run, one row at the end. Uh, but we've done quite a lot of DB hits. So we've done 130,000 pieces of work. Uh, the first bit of work was find every single node. Uh, the second bit of work was check the property on every single node and check if it's the matrix. So that's quite a, an expensive way of finding, uh, finding our matrix. Uh, so that's not so good. Uh, which leads us to tip number one, uh, which is that if you've got a label on a node, uh, make use of it uh, in your query and help the, help the planner work out what, what are you actually trying to find. So the only thing we've changed here from the previous slide is that we've put in uh, colon movie. So that's the, that's the syntax for saying, this node that you're looking up, uh, it's got a label, and the label is movie. So don't bother looking at nodes which have any other label. Uh, you can zoom in straight to movie. Uh, and this is what we see uh, if we if we query we create a query plan for this. Um, so for those of you at the back, this is uh, node by label scan. So slightly better. So not so, so instead of the all node scan, uh, we've gone down to the label scan, and this time it's looking at uh, 12,863 uh, dB hits. So that's so. You can infer from that this 12,860, I think it's probably, uh, let's say 12,863 uh, uh, movies in our database. So we've got 12,000 movies, so instead, but there was a whole load of other data that we looked at before, which we don't need to look at, because we know we're finding a movie, and there's not going to be a person uh, whose title is the matrix, so we can exclude all those. Um, but even if we do that, uh, we've still got to go and then check the property every single time. So check the property, check the property, check the property. So we end up with still kind of around 25,000. Uh, so we've gone from, what do we have before? 120,000, so we're now down to 25,000. So we've cut the bits of, bit of work by four. So it's a good start. Um, well, and if we compare them side by side, you can see it, uh, you can kind of see the shape of how these queries work. So if you're at the back, you actually get a really good example of how to look at the shape. Uh, and effectively, you're looking at how much, how much red am I seeing uh, in different parts. Uh, and effectively, all we're doing is we're just trying to reduce the amount of red. Um, I think, if I remember right, this is in log scale, which is why it doesn't look like five times smaller. It only looks like, I guess, one and a half times smaller th on this side. Uh, but these are the two queries. So this was the first one. This is kind of the naive, find me the matrix, which does quite a lot of work. And we end up with one row at the end. Uh, and this is the uh, slightly optimized one where we're narrowing in on movie. Okay. 
but we can do even better. Right, and that is to actually uh, make use of indexes and constraints. So um, I won't go through this in a lot of detail, so hopefully you guys know about this. So uh, the first two statements are actually setting an um, index on the title property of a label movie, and the second one is creating a, an index on a name of a person um, label. And then also we can create unique indexes. So using this information, just to, to tell you a bit more about indexes in Neo4j, uh, we, we, only, we, we only use index, indexes are only used to find the starting point for queries. They essentially are, unlike in a relational model, m where most of the time you're using um, indexes to get a, a set of uh, rows that you then use to actually join on, we actually only are finding the starting points for a query, so that's the uh, difference. So basically, a big, big, big tip, actually, this can really um, cut its way through a lot of your badly performing queries, is to use indexes and constraints. So uh, continuing on with uh, Mark's example, what we actually see now, I don't know if you can see, we now have node index seek, and you know what, there's only one row coming out of that, and uh, two DB hits, which is much, much, much better than the um, whopping, what was it, 12,000 that we had with the labeled, and the even more whopping 65,000 that we had without um, any labels. So uh, basically, this is just comparing and contrasting. No index, we have that uh, monster over there running. And with, a, with an index, it's uh, short and sweet. Uh, OK, so let's have a look. Right, so that, that, that's, the, that's the opening. So opening tip is make, make sure if you're, if you're actually searching by a property, uh, put indexes on. You'll, you'll see the, that's, a, that's a kind of the biggest, uh, the biggest way of improving the speed of the query. Uh, so now we're going to look at something a little bit more complicated. Uh, so we're going to start with the query that we're trying to, we're trying to write. Uh, so what we want to do uh, is find uh, actors who appear together. So we're, we're writing, um, so we're going so from the left-hand side. So we're starting with, uh, so we find, find Tom Hanks. Um, he acted in, and then here we don't actually care. We don't actually want to collect this, but we know that it's going to be a movie from our knowledge of the domain. So Tom Hanks acted in something, uh, and then we've got another person uh, acting from the other side. Uh, and we're going to narrow that to Meg Ryan. So it's effectively Tom Hanks acted in some movies, find the ones where Meg Ryan was also in them. So kind of finding that sort of two sides of a triangle, and then just return uh, how many there are. Uh, so if we start off, um, so we've already applied our index, index tips, and we're cool. We've got the index in there early. Uh, so we found only one person straight away. Uh, and then we're just expanding out. So we're kind of expanding out that acts in relationship. Uh, and then we're doing it from the other side as well. So we're going to find Meg Ryan, expand that out. Uh, and then we're doing some filtering to make sure that the two people are different. Um, so kind of all together, we've got, I guess we've got about 500 or so DB hits. Uh, so what we can do here, uh, if we know the shape of the data, and we know that actually if you, if you narrow in and, you, uh, and, and look up uh, and start your query from two sides, so find Tom Hanks and find Meg Ryan, rather than in the previous one where it was just Meg Ryan and kind of going out. So if we can give it the, the hint that, hey, by the way, there's an index that you can use on both of these. Um, then we, we, we can be able to get a speed up. So all the, the syntax for doing that uh, is that you, is you, after the query, you type in using index, and then you've got to tell it uh, what, what label and property uh, combination do you want to use an index on. Uh, and as Petra said, again, the, the, I just finished this, and then I, then I come there. Um, as Petra said, the index is only used to find the starting point. So what we're optimizing here is zoom in on Tom Hanks, zoom in on Meg Ryan, and then, and then find, that, find the combination between them. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, ideally, I guess the perfect, the perfect optimizer would do that for you, so it's not yet the perfect optimizer. Uh, in this case, we just happen to know, um, because of the way that the, the, data, the data is designed between the two axes, we happen to know that, by the way, if you use an index on both sides, that's going to be quicker. Okay. Uh, so if we run that one through, uh, the query plan actually now looks quite like it's quite a different shape. Um, so what we've got, so I'll go through it. So we've got a node index seek on both sides. Uh, so this one will be, this is for B. So this is for Meg Ryan, this is for Meg Ryan's side. Uh, this is for Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks' side. Uh, we're, we're just expanding out. And then we're, what we're doing actually in the middle uh, is we're doing a join of the two data sets. So we're kind of going, hey, find all the ones Tom Hanks in, find all the ones that Meg Ryan's in, and then join them together in the middle. Uh, and then again, we're just kind of filtering, do filtering to make sure that they're different. Uh, and again, we get one row, which is just the count. Uh, and what we've got here, so we're down to 60 dB hits. So we went down from 500 to 60. Uh, and what you'll find, I mean, this is a, this is a relatively small data set. If you were to do this when the, like with the whole of the IMDb, IMDB database or with a much bigger data set, you'll start to see that the, 
the actual speed up is, is, is much bigger uh, than what you can do uh, on the smaller one. Uh, so, and, right, so here's the, here's the plans against each other. So you can see the only thing we've changed is we've added in these two lines just to tell the plan, hey, by the way, I know uh, that if you start using an index here and an index here, that's going to be, that's gonna be the, be the best thing that you can come up with. Uh, and you can kind of see the plan. So we've reduced, um, we've kind of reduced this bit here. This is where we've got rid of, um, of work. Uh, okay, so that's, uh, so that's hit, hit, hint uh, number two, uh, is if you know uh, from the structure of the data uh, that using indexes on both sides might help, uh, give it the hint. Um, but yeah, you don't necessarily have to start with that point. Maybe you start with just writing it in the way you normally write, and you have a look, and you're like, but I know that, I, that it will be faster uh, if, if, it, if it did a different plan. So you're kind of using your domain knowledge uh, along with the, with the planner's uh, sort of knowledge of the, of the query language. So you're always kind of combining those two. Uh, so, okay, let's have a look at the next one. So we've got another query now. So this time we want to find um, Tom Hanks' colleagues' movies. So, so, so again, going from the left, so, if I, so what we're doing is we're saying find Tom Hanks. He acted in some movies. Uh, some, a co-actor acted in some movies with him. So that's the connection here. And then that co-actor acted in some other movies, and we want to want to find those. So like, what, what movies are Tom Hanks' colleagues acting in, uh, other than the ones he acted in with them? So if we write this query, this is what we get. So we're starting at the top, so we've got the node index seek. Uh, we then expand out the axon. Uh, we then expand out the axon again, and it kind of keeps on going through. We do a bit of filtering, uh, and we kind of go through, and we get 2,000 rows at the end um, uh, of different movies. That's, that's probably reasonably, that's, that's not too bad. Um, the, uh, the knowledge of the domain that we would have here, uh, knowing, knowing how this data set is, is uh, is structured uh, is that actually we're doing extra work because uh, we happen to know uh, in the middle uh, that those co-actors are going to come up lots of times because they'll come up for all the different movies uh, that Tom Hanks acted with them in. So if he acted with somebody in five movies, they appear here five times, um, potentially. Uh, so what we can do with that knowledge, uh, so the, the query planner doesn't necessarily know that, but we, we as the movie uh, domain expert know, oh yeah, it's going to be the same person lots of times, uh, so we can actually help out the planner. Uh, and so all, what we do, all we do here, a slight tweak is the bit in blue. Uh, so instead of having everything in one match statement, uh, we're splitting it up into two, and we're, just, uh, uh, and we're running a distinct over the co-actors. Um, and the, the result will be exactly the same, uh, because those co-actors are just repeated lots of times. And all it, all it was doing in the first version uh, is repeating this uh, search lots of times. Uh, and so we can actually help it out and say, actually, there's no need for you to do that. Uh, so the tip is reduce the work in progress. So if you can, if you can split up the query, uh, reduce the amount of work it has to do at the end, then that, that's, a, that's a, good, uh, a good thing to do. Uh, so if we play this through, uh, we've the bit that we've reduced is we're reducing the amount of work that's been done down here. And you, I guess you can't quite see that, so we'll, we'll do them side by side. Um, uh, so on this side, let me see, so we've got 238, we've got 400, 3,000, so that's about 10,000 on that side, and we're down we're down to about 8,000 on this side, so it's a slight, a slight, slight improvement. Uh, and again, depending on how much duplication there was of those co-actors, so if lots and lots of people worked with each other lots of times uh, in your data set, or the equivalent of that data set, then you, then you see that this, this hint uh, would give you a, fast, uh, a greater speed up. All right, next one. Right, so the next tip is actually, sorry, there's a question there. Hey, do you want to get the... Going back for a second to the distinct example, once yeah. you apply that query, isn't that data set already cached? Once you run into that actor again, the data is, doesn't require any more uh, data access, database access? Uh, I don't, actually, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Do, uh, when you, if you run that query and then that one, uh, would the fact that the data, some of the, or the data is cached have an impact on the DB hits? Yeah. Bring the mic over here. <laughs> so did you did you get that? No. Uh, so so what? Uh, I'll get, give the mic to Andres. Okay. 
So if you run the same query twice, what will happen is that <coughs> the data will be cached and run, but it's still a DB hit. It's still doing storage engine work. It's just not going down to disk. Cool. So I'll go back to you again. Right, so our next example is basically to uh, count the number of movies each actor was in. So uh, basically, yeah, if I were to sit down and write this query, I may initially think of writing something like this. And the query plan produced, you can actually see, uh, pretty much it gets all of the um, actors up there, so that's uh, almost 45,000 rows. And then we hit this um, lovely expand all operator, and you can see, actually, well, actually you probably can't see, it expands all the relationships out from there to get 94,700 rows. So suddenly it's you know, going from a reasonable amount to much, much more. And then from there it actually um, continues projection and then it actually sorts and uh, ends there. Anyway, but I think we can do much better than that. So a nice tip to use is to actually use size for, relationship, for fast counting of a number of relationships. So essentially what we have now, in fact, it's probably better if I with the two plans side by side. So I've been through that guy already. The main thing here is that the number of rows remains constant, and that is because we actually have this get degree operator in here, which essentially is a, an order of one operation. And what it does is for each actor that's found, it actually gets the number of relationships uh, of type um, acts in and actually passes that through. So all the time, we're just staying at uh, 45,000 rows doesn't ever actually expand outwards and cause a, you know, more DB hits to occur. So that's actually quite a nice tip for you guys to use if you find you need this sort of information. Right, getting to hints. So yes, so this is, um, we do strive for our cost planner to be always picking the cheapest uh, logical model and hence, you know, coming up with the optimal execution plan. But this sometimes is not possible. So we're tr trying all the time to actually make it that the number of cases where you need to provide hints is less and less and less. But obviously it's not perfect yet, and um, as I say, we, we are actually looking at this. So sometimes it is necessary to actually uh, use hints, and this is where your um, data domain knowledge comes into use. So for example, in this case, using index, this is going back to the um, slides Mark had just now, uh, this is actually how you'd use that. So this is where you, so say you have a query where you expect it to be quite fast because there's an index on a particular property for a particular label. And when you're looking at the, well, first of all, you've probably noticed that the query is running slowly. Looking at the plan, you'd see, actually, that index is not being used. That's really weird. Why is that not happening? And if you actually were then to force the index, that may actually be a way for you to, to get it to actually um, use a much cheaper plan. So as I say, uh, we are working on eliminating these cases one by one. But as I say, this is a, a fallback to use if uh, yeah, if the plan's not actually, a uh, plan being picked is not the best one. Uh, just to be, obviously, um, hints also a good way for you to actually explore different options as well, so um, that they need to be used with caution. Another hint you can actually use is something called using scan. And this again is actually um, something that requires domain knowledge. So in this particular case, you may actually know that, well, we've got, how many was it, 65,000 uh, movie nodes but maybe only 12,000 nodes have the comedy label. So because you know that actually the comedy label is quite small, it's got a very low cardinality, you maybe actually also, again, for badly performing queries, want to actually force a label scan on comedy, and this is how you'd actually do that. So you had a, uh, a, a single label. If you had multiple labels that you wanted to scan in a certain order, uh, is there a way to do that? Or would you put multiple using scan? Operations? It actually doesn't really matter. So you can put multiple using scans, and um, essentially the, um, there's no order. It doesn't use any order of that to actually construct the logical plan. So if, I'm not sure if I answered that correctly. Um, if so. If there was multiple labels on a node and you knew that one of them was the smallest and the other one was also small and you could fall back to the second one, it's just going to pick one arbitrarily or how does that work? Uh, not sure. Andres, do you know? So it's, 
it will only use one label per node. So you, you can't specify more than one using uh, scan per node, per identifier. Actually, I wonder if we could uh, save questions for later offline, because we actually have five minutes left, and there's quite a lot still to get through. Uh, okay, so, we, uh, yeah, we can, we can do, if you've got any questions, we've got a, a thing called Graph Clinic uh, upstairs, which is kind of almost directly in the middle of that floor. Uh, so we're all hanging around there, so you can come and grab us there. Uh, but we're going to wrap up uh, with uh, just some other sort of general uh, hints uh, that you might find useful. Uh, so the first one uh, is that you should use parameters uh, in your query, uh, if you can. So when you're writing them, when you, I mean, when you're writing them, uh, I guess when you're just playing around in the browser, you can't do this. Uh, but when you build them in your application, this is a, this is an, a, a tip that you want to follow. So rather than doing this, where we're putting in, uh, we're going, hey, find me the person name. I'm going to tell you it's the string Tom Hanks. Uh, what you rather want to do uh, is define. You can define a parameter name uh, in the curly brackets, uh, and then you can uh, feed that in uh, when you when you call the uh, API from your from your program. Uh, and one thing Cipher will do uh, is it tries to auto parameterize the top query. Uh, so it'll go, oh, okay, well, it looks like there's a literal string there, so I'm going to try and make the assumption that that is actually a parameter, and then if you did it with another name, I'll try and, I'll, I'll try and predict that one as well. Uh, but if you happen to know, uh, if you can actually tell it, definitely this is parameterized, uh, that's always going to be more effective than it trying to work it out for you. Uh, next one. Oh, yes. Uh, lovely Cartesian product. Uh, who's actually, who's, by mistake, written the first query? when they didn't actually mean a Cartesian product to happen. I certainly have. So I innocently, you know, tried to get the counts of uh, those two uh, labels, and boom, you get a, quite a Nazi surprise if this was not your intention. So just be aware of this uh, p particular pattern. Only write queries like that using disconnected patterns if you really, really want a Cartesian product for some reason. If you don't, this actually is a really, really um, badly performing thing, because obviously a Cartesian product creates a, a massive amount of uh, <laughs> intermediate results. So if this was a, if, if you were trying to actually get something like that, rather use this query over here. So actually just something to point out, that's actually incorrect anyway. Count A and count M will actually return the uh, total number of rows, i.e. the Cartesian product, uh, A times M, which is uh, not what the uh, intention is. So uh, try and use a pattern like that rather. And it's much, 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 much faster. And leading from that actually, in, um, in the latest uh, version we've actually got uh, browser warnings, and obviously these get logged as well. And it's uh, quite a good idea to watch out for these. Uh, they'll actually give you some information if you are trying to uh, do things. So this, I'm, I'm just pulling up the uh, Cartesian product uh, warning, but there are all sorts of other warnings as well that we've deemed useful to feed back to our users in cases where some odd things may happen that you may not be aware of. Uh, for example, if uh, you provide an index hint, for example, that actually cannot be fulfilled, we'll actually chuck up a warning saying, Ugh, Okay, we'll still run your query because uh, having a hint in there is not uh, required to make the query actually work, but we'll warn you that, you know what, we can actually use your hint for that. So it's just some feedback for you. So the, uh, basically the meta tip for this is to watch out for warnings. Yeah, and then I guess this is a similar, similar hint to, uh, to what we've been talking about before. So you're kind of looking... Uh, do you see anywhere in the query where you suddenly see lots of red uh, or, it's a, or the number of rows uh, expands a lot? So your kind of ideal query, I guess, is kind of keeping uh, the shape of the number of rows kind of consistent all the way down, so not really going really, really wide and then shrinking in again, uh, and ideally keeping the, the amount of red uh, DB hits that are happening uh, low. Uh, and, and the way to optimize is basically have a look uh, where the most hits are happening and, and try and figure out is there a way that we can actually reduce those. There's always going to be one bottleneck in your query. Um, another tip uh, is only return what you need. So this is kind of beyond this. This is sort of when you're coming from an application. Uh, and uh, sometimes something we've seen people do is like create nodes with, with hundreds of properties. Uh, and then uh, on their page, they only use like three of them. Uh, and then they return, if you, re if you do this query up here, match actor, return A, that gives you back every single property. So every single row you get, for example, 100 properties back. Uh, and if, if all you're doing on your application is just using three of them, uh, then you might as well just return three of them. You can save uh, sort of a lot of work uh, on, the on the streaming back to the application. Um, and then, and then yeah, 
I guess the final sort of tip, uh, is try and keep the query short. So don't, do, don't try and do the 230 line query that we saw uh, the plan off at the beginning. Um, be nice, <laughs> be nice to Cypher. Get, get, do, it's better sometimes you'll find to do lots of small queries uh, rather than doing one large one. Um, and if you only want to use the rule planner, then you're going to have to, at the moment, you have to keep the, your reads and writes uh, separate. But, but over time, that, that, that bit of advice will go away. Uh, so if you've uh, fallen asleep and just woken up, here's your TLDR for the whole talk. <laughs> Didn't know this was coming, did you? Uh, so to, to the takeaway. So view your query plans with explain and profile if you, th if you think that the, the query is not as fast as you expected it to be. Uh, use labels. Uh, make sure you index the places where you're starting your query from or, 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 cons or cons add constraints. Uh, keep the amount of work in progress uh, like low, so try and, try and keep it the um, same amount of work on each step. Uh, and if, you, if what you want to do is count the number of relationships, uh, use size, uh, and remember the hints. Uh, and we'll, we'll, I guess we'll, we'll put the slide somewhere so you can, uh, you can read this in more detail. You weren't intended to like, study each of those plans. That would be quite difficult, especially if you're where Ryan is at the back. And yeah, if, you, if, if the tips aren't working, there's a guy called Michael Hunger, who is basically like a human planner. Um, so if you post your, post your question on there. I wanted to put his face on this slide, but he's got quite a lot of work to do already. So I'll just go for his name. Um, but yeah, that's the end. We've apparently got one minute left. Oh, sorry, I just want to also reiterate the plea that if you are happy for us to use your data and some exemplar queries that are not performing that well, please, please, please contact us. We'd love to actually um, incorporate them in our benchmarks and actually use that to help us make our uh, cost planner better. Thank you. <laughs>